This is the last video store, a sacred bastion of culture, film, movies, and cinema. My name is Alexis Toliopoulos, and I am the guardian of this sacred realm. And it is my duty to connect people with the films they love. Our new member of the last video store signing up today is a true renaissance man. Tony Armstrong. You know Tony Armstrong from ABC News Breakfast. He's a wicked sports player back in the day. And yeah, that's the term that I use, sports player, AFL star for the Sydney Swans. But let me tell you this, Tony Armstrong is like one of the most exciting guys I've ever met, my dear close personal friend, because he is doing so much cool stuff at the moment, working on so many cool things, writing, doing like so many unexpected things that are so exciting. And one of the most extraordinary things he's doing is a factual series. You know I love documentaries. You know I love factual stuff. And his new show, Tony Armstrong's Extraordinary Things, premieres on ABC very soon. It's launching in May. But we want to get this out there to start building and teasing your hype for his foray into the world of factual documentaries. We'll talk about it a little bit more on the show today. But until then, let me tell you this, the new member combo that Tony is going to get. I am going to sign him up to the store. and He's going to get out a new release film. It's any film from like the last five or so years. Then I'm going to give him two weekly picks. Those are two of his favorite films of all time. And... A bespoke customized recommendation based on his taste. And as a little bonus, because you're about to see this, we're in the back room. We had to do some renovations of the store. There was a leak. There was a leak. A torrential rain sought upon us here in Batuta. El Nino, La Nina, they joined forces and they crashed us with rain. We had a leak. We had a freaking leak. And I had to clean up all the DVDs. So we had to take him into the back room. And because of that, because he got that back room treatment, baby, I'm giving him an extra weekly as a thank you as an apology the guy is going to have three freaking weeklies maybe that's going to be tough of me to put together i like a perfect recommendation but you know i'm confident i got a good idea of what this guy likes so let's get into the show with tony armstrong <laughs> Well, 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 <laughs> look who has rocked up to the last video store, but my dear old buddy, Tony Armstrong. It is so nice to be here. And I've got to say, I love what you've done with the place. Oh, absolutely. We're in the back room. Oh, the this back, is the back room. room. Mm. Yes. You know, it's we where have... you find clerks. Exactly. <laughs> this is my nightmare, this room. The back room is where we keep all the discs. No. All the cases are out there on the floor, but here... This is where the real magic happens. The films, each disc contains at least one beautiful film. <laughs> so many memories, so many dreams contained on these reflective surfaces, hidden away in their little sleeves. Each one, a lucky dip with a corresponding number written on each case. <laughs> so here you are in. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you are in what the cerebellum of the video store, my friend. The heart, the soul, the mind. What am I even supposed to say to that? <laughs> oh, it's but, a pleasure to be here, man. Uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Uh, you know, you, I know that you're in town. You're working mm. on little things in Batuta Way at the yes, moment. Yes, I am. I'm going to sign you up to the video store, presumably, while you're here, you want to watch a couple of movies. <laughs> Mate, always, there's always time to watch a flick. And, you know, Batuta, we've got no freaking internet. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I had to become here and do my duty. It's my mission on earth to serve those people, to help people connect with the movies that they love. And this is my final outpost, my final resting place. Is this it? Is this, this is where it. you is this where you shoulder arms and that's it? That's You're done. It. I've retired here. Oh my god. My dream come true to retire with my many discs. What do you do after hours? Well, I watch the movies. <laughs> 
That's a really dumb question on my behalf. And there's a certain beaded section around here where I will take many a surgeon to <laughs> a beaded section of the store, store by the lovely beaded curtain. Uh, but I'm going to sign you up to the store. All okay. I'm going to need is a single piece of identification from you. Mm-hmm. And it's coming up on my system right away. I've got a wonderful announcement. Oh, the wow. ABC up front. The press release is out. <laughs> Tony Armstrong's Extraordinary Things. Yes, and yes. You're in Batuta filming an episode. Yes, we yeah we have just been here in Batuta shooting an episode. Um, we just got it all in the can here, so we had uh, we we headed down to the pub to to uh, talk the local all, watering hole to talk all about the Batuta pub. Mm. Um, this this series that you're working now, it's like a great docu series where you find interesting objects yeah extraordinary things where i guess interesting objects is the working title Mm -mm, yeah we left that on the floor for a reason uh (laughs) no so um extraordinary things uh i guess can look like anything you know they don't necessarily have to be kathy freeman's gold medal although Mm. that is extraordinary i would say it's quite it could it could be a phone case it could be a lapel it could be a briefcase it could be literally anything because it's less about i can't wait for the lapel episode it's yeah um, i mean it goes off (laughs) (laughs) and on and off again (laughs) um but i guess it's more about the stories that they unlock Mm. and um you know it was it and the show has been a great way for me to, I guess, connect with a lot of people right across the country and have them tell their stories. And mm. I guess what I learned through the shooting of the show, everyone's got something amazing to tell. Everyone's got an amazing story to tell and it can be unlocked through the simplest of uh, of um, objects. And um, yeah, so that show will come out sometime in May. Uh, so very, very excited for that. And um, yeah, just a thrill to come here to... Leafy Batuta. Um, uh, I guess no one's called it Leafy. Uh, no, no, so no. I'm just having a crack at bringing that in. Well, we've got the tree out front. Yeah, the, the one tree. Batuta yeah, tree yeah, is yeah. out front of here. And it's looking not great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. We will have to kind of make a little manure concoction <laughs> for it to start thriving again. I was thinking water it, but sure. Hey, it go needs down, a lot more help than that. Go go down the manure path. That's mm. that's fine. <laughs> so I find this show so interesting because it's like, I like the idea of taking these physical things and finding the connections that we have with them. Are there any of those stories that you're like particularly excited about or excited to expose to the population of Australia? After Uh, all, it's mandatory viewing. Everyone (laughs) has to watch the show. Yeah, um, watch it, all right? Um, No, there's... So we got to have a chat to a young Indigenous rapper from WA. Mm. His name's Inkaby. Um, I'm not sure if you remember last year at um, a mutual friend of ours back in Sydney, um, Ben Johnson, his pub, mm. the Lord Gladstone. Mm-hmm. The Gladdy. The, the Gladdy. Clubs. Chance, Clubs. Ch- <laughs> Chance the Rapper played there. Yeah. And Inkaby played on stage with Chance the Rapper. He rapped with him. Anyway, we got to have a chat to him. He's only 11 at the time of filming. Up. And... Um, and we got to have a look at his notebook where he writes his raps and, you know, basically the thing that he kickstarted his own journey and his own, uh, I guess, walk walk down this path that he finds himself on now. Mm. I, I cannot wait for people to see that, um, to see that part of the show because, yeah, we're looking at a, at a future leader, not just in, in, I guess, the entertainment space, but... Um, from uh, an Aboriginal point of view, he's going to be a real leader of our people and not, nice to get in at the ground floor and just mm. have a yarn to him. I, yeah, I just cannot wait. People are going to love him. But it's all sorts of things. It's People are going to love it, I think. So yeah, make sure you have a look in, uh, in our May. So a couple of months now. A couple of months or who knows, maybe this episode will force them to release the series. Oh, now. To get on the heat of everyone talking about it. Well, they're going to be talking about it after this, that's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely, and absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, damn it. I should have said that one. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony, I'm going to send you out into the store. Okay. You've got the beautiful new members rental combo. One year release, three weeklies. For you, it's going to be three weeklies. Three weeklies? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to give you a bespoke, customized recommendation based oh. on your picks, a staff pick, an Alexi choice, if you will. Oh, gee whiz. That is much sought after. You don't even give give these give these choices to me outside the world of this podcast. I very <laughs> handily have them out like, dude, this will be content one day. I'm saving it for that. 
So you've got a choice of basically any movie ever. Go on out there. Okay. Pick your flicks. Come on back. We'll talk about them. Okay, great. New release. Okay, we're here with your new release. Mm -hmm. And this is a spicy one. Yeah, look, um, I'm actually not sure how I found it in the new release section. I'm not sure if it falls within the last five years. I didn't... I, it just makes it the cut. Just makes the it cut. just makes the cut. Thank 2019. Thank goodness. And by my math, that's five years. So <laughs> we would be very stiff if it was released in, you know, January 11, <laughs> 2024. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. But this is a film I absolutely love. This is Bong Joon-ho's yeah. instant classic Instant Parasite. classic Parasite. And I've got to say, what I loved about this film was the 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 sheer creativity to come up with a storyline like this, um, the the gumption of mm. of our protagonist family, I guess the or the sheer audacity of them to try to pull off what they're trying to pull off, mm -hmm. and then stylistically, you're looking at this thing and you're going every single shot is like. It could be in the the photograph of the year. It could like, like as as a still, mm -hmm. and then I guess the style. I think we all fell in love with with Korean style um, for a little while after this film came out. Everyone was run it was running the kind of straight leg kind of billowy pants a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe maybe uh, a little bit more boxy tops mm -hmm. as well. And then it was hilarious. You know, we're, we're da like, like we're touching on some really dark stuff. Like, you know, mm. we're talking about people who are completely overtaking other people's identity. Mm. They, are, they are by hook or by crook sneaking their way into people's houses, stealing their trust. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, it turns into a slasher. Like, what the hell? I think um, that's what's it's, so exciting it's about incredible. it, right? Because it's like this mix of tensions, tones, a few different genres kind of blended together. And Bong Joon-ho has kind of always done that. I think he's a director that really understands genre and genre as a means to communicate to people. Mm. And I think that's what really excites me about this. I still remember seeing Parasite for the first time. It would have been just after its premiere at the City Film Festival. And mm. it played really big here. Uh, I think it was. Did you oh, see it at the festival? No. I at the screening just after, so okay. it'd been just a little bit of buzz around it. It may it had just played Khan as well, and I remember seeing it in this screening, just going by myself. Had a couple of other friends that were there, and like it was on my radar, but I kind of was not. Go I didn't have a knowing what it was going to be. You weren't. You. I like, wasn't primed. Yeah, yeah. So you know? like on on your radar, but not like. I gotta see it. Yeah, I got like like I'm gonna drop like I've been hearing it's good, if, so I need to see it. Yeah. But not like yeah. I didn't know what if I was it's about this to or that. I'm yeah. Just, yeah. Oh man. And I remember just turning to my friend who was next to me after and going like, "Holy shit! Like this is big, right? This feels like it's gonna be big." And Bong Joon Ho had already made like Memories of Murder was kind of like a popular breakthrough film for him uh, at that point already. Snowpiercer had been his kind of way breaking into like a bigger audience. Yeah, bigger audience, American filmmaker. King. But I think Parasite kind of really returns to his, not just like location wise, but to his Korean filmmaking roots of like Korean filmmaking had like a great new wave in that 2000s period between like Bong Joon Ho, Park Chan Wook, making independent films that have like this undercurrent of something through them. Like there, there's an excitement, there's a tension, there's a genre to them. And I think Parasite the way that it kind of delights in comedy while then using that as a way to like leverage a tragedy that comes on. Oh man. Like I remember when, like, like when you, when it's revealed to you that there is, there is like, like life under the house mm -hmm. and you're just like, Whoa, it's like, feels it, like a genuine twist. It's like, this is a wrinkle I didn't see coming. But it makes sense. And it feels so powerful, like in the connective tissue when it comes to the themes of like, you know, I love movies where you can just go the title and then go, who is the real parasite? 100%. <laughs> and, and like, and, and I suppose like if you were to put all these things on paper mm -hmm. and say them all without giving, con 
without having watched the film, you go, well, there's no way that I'm actually going to believe that. Mm -hmm. There's 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 no way that this film is going to keep me grip like is going to be able to do that in a in a manner that's grounded enough. Mm. Because that that's like batshit crazy, right? Yeah. It is that is off its head. But then you watch it, and at no point are you going, oh, oh that's that's broken. It never feels untethered from the reality. That's, that's, that's broken set. the world. Yeah, it it he never breaks the world. It's yeah, again, like the only time he broke the world was when that film went all the way to oh! win best picture at the Oscars. I oh, mean, how and good! What a great journey! Like you never see a journey like that, especially it's one of the very few international and foreign language films to take out that award. Off the top of my head, can't think of another one straight away. So I'll put it in post. Crouching, Crouching Tiger. Oh, no, yeah, sorry, no, 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 sorry, not that got a nomination. Sorry, not Crouching Tiger. Um, that uh, did get all the way was to it? nomination. Oh, well, there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it might have also been one that didn't. I, I, I might have only read this today. I think it might have also been one that only got um, that didn't have any actor noms. Yeah, that's true. It didn't, it didn't have, have any, any acting nominations. Any, no, no, no acting noms, yeah. but got the best picture noms yeah and that's i think it's it shows like that i think there's a willingness now to for people to want to explore international cinema to want to explore foreign language films i think parasite was such a like groundbreaking film for a new generation of people to embrace korean cinema well i think a lot of people me being one of them went back and revisited um a new boy Old boy. Oh, old boy, sorry. Yeah, yeah, old boy. Um, went back and revisited that. Yeah. And and then watched it with a newfound appreciation for just how good it was mm. as like the ultimate revenge flick, right? One of my very the, favorite movies. The, the, the ultimate revenge flick. Mm. And, you know, I was also probably a bit young when I first watched it, you know. Yeah. Might have might have might have watched that sort of It can warp your brain that one. Might have watched it, you know, in between mm -hmm. being on a phone or something. Mm -hmm. But then after watching Parasite and having watched Parasite in the cinema, then I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to do it properly. All I hear about is how good this is. Yeah. And I remember having watched it and being like, Mah. and then I was like, whoa. And I think we saw, a, you know, there was that. And then um, what was that uh, Netflix show that came out in... Um, oh, Squid Game. So then... So and then, Squid Game going so big is definitely part of that narrative, I, part of the world I, changing. I think because then we saw a lot of, mm. I guess, those Korean narrative um, shows mm -hmm. come come through that Netflix funnel because um, there was a huge appetite for them. And I think not just that, like thinking about cinema as a worldwide form or even just like visual media now... I think Parasite kind of kicks off a new cycle of films and TV shows that deal with class in a way like this. Like, I don't think without Parasite, I don't think we have a salt burn the way that we have it. And then you've got like White Lotus coming not too soon after yeah. it. You start seeing those films that are dealing with class and the disparity between the classes and like that as like a friction point between them all. I think Parasite really kicks that off. Yeah. I'm I mean, far out. It's interesting you put you put Saltburn and um Parasite in the same bracket because they actually are. I'd mm. I'd never considered it like that. But but God, no no disrespect to Saltburn, which I really enjoyed, but I mean Parasite's one out of the box, man. Mm -hmm. Hard to hard to hard to to match up against Parasite and come away a winner. And that's why I think it's such a great pick. We're gonna get into the weeklies. Before I do, yes, uh, I've got to ask you one more question before mm. I finish I'm signing excited. you up. Have you ever been a member of another video store before? Because you're gonna to have to swear your allegiance to us, brother. Hey, look, I am <laughs> I am in the cult. Consider me signed up. Um, <laughs> now, um. I was pretty young when I left Sydney. Um, so I left Sydney with mum when I was, and this is Western Sydney, mm -hmm. when I was, I'm going to say 11. Yeah. So I just remember. At 11, you're just getting your own taste as well, I reckon. Just. You're starting to build it. Just, right? Yeah. And I reckon it was Fairfield Video Easy. Video Easy. Video Easy mm -hmm. in Fairfield. And... Um, now I, w I obviously couldn't be a member because I was I was too young. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it would have been out. It of was clean. like a Medicare card where you're the it, second uh, man. No, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, <clears throat> man, it used to be so fun, and like I think that is, I think, I think that is actually one, one thing. And this is gonna like make me sound like they don't know what they're missing. Mm -hmm. But I think it there is, there was truly something about the ritual mm. of on a Friday night. Absolutely, the you know, ceremony of it all. Exactly you know? right. And and um, you look at you know so many things about mental health and all that kind of stuff about doing like like having having ritual, having ceremony, whatever it may be. You know, going for your morning coffee, going and doing this. I remember we'd go every Friday night. My mom was a school teacher as well. So Friday night after school, we'd go down in the video easy and you'd just be walking through it, you know, and depending on what time you got there, there might like all like, like the, you know, the big movie of the time was probably gone. It was, you know, like you had to kind of get there. <laughs> the spots empty. Yeah. You're looking for the tape behind uh, it. You're yeah. Like and all you see is, um, is like the cover. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh no. And they'd always have like three or four of them. Yeah. And uh, you're and like, God, someone's no, probably no, hit no. one somewhere. Yeah. And then you'd always go up the front and ask, oh, any of them that you haven't put out yet? <laughs> oh, no. And, and and like that wouldn't happen here at Batuta Videos. No, you'd we've be got straight every movie, on that. Straight copies. on that. A million copies. Mm -hmm. I know that. That's because you've got all of the ones that are obsolete. <laughs> yeah. um, but did but, you ever go exploring through the oh, shop? Oh, man. See, this is the thing. And you would, right? Because mm -hmm. I. Like, because you know you might you might have a have a deal not dissimilar to the one that I'm partaking in right now, <laughs> um, where you might get you might walk away with four films, and of course, mum mum being the benevolent mother that she was, she would only she would only want to want to choose one for herself and give me three, and you know you might you might let the legs the little the little <laughs> the little getaway sticks go for a bit of a walk yeah. around the store. And I'll never forget, there was this film and there was this um, superhero um, called Spawn. Now, Spawn, dude, I don't know if you remember. I'm looking at you nodding right now. Oh, man, I'm nodding big time. Okay. I feel like this is like a shared memory between us. Oh, guys. my God, dude. Okay, like, do you do you remember? I remember the cover. The cover, right? It's like that big green glowing eye. The glowing mm -hmm. eyes and like just the, the, the faint outline of the skull, right? Yeah, and you're like, holy shit, and this is you, devilish. And then if you flipped it, mm -hmm. it had him on the... Do you remember on the um on He's like cresting? The He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, right? And I was like, I wanted to watch that movie for so long, man. Yeah, I'm 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 talking probably two and a half years. Yeah. I'm I would like eye it off, eye it off, eye it off. Were you trepidatious? Were you scared? Well, I think I was like, oh my god, he looks so cool. <laughs> He's a superhero, man. Um I think it was DC. I think he's part of the DC universe. I can't confirm that. Let me look it up because I'll tell you this. I went through a similar thing where I had a mini Spawn obsession. I never saw the movie. Have I you seen it? I never read the book. Have you never seen done it? Any of the, never. Never since. Okay. Because well, I was always scared of him. Can like, we can pinky we promise? Can we pinky, we're watching that together, brother. Absolutely. Stamp it. Yeah, nice. Spawn. Spawn. Have you ever seen it? I haven't seen it either. <laughs> <laughs> we how have we both not seen Spawn? I know. And it's like a big part of us. I know, and like my access to Spawn right now would be quite easy. I think. Oh yeah, it's a couple of it's a couple of taps of or oh, sorry, it's a couple of t um keystrokes. But yeah, I remember I remember always wanting wanting to to hire that, but never having the gumption to ask mum. Um, and the and the other thing that I think um, um, Spawn is Image Comics. Image Comics. It's not DC or Marvel. Oh. oh. The twist we never saw coming. We never I saw that image. coming. Yeah, we're, we're big in the image now. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the other thing that upon reflection is so funny, I think every single family in Australia had a DVD repair kit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone had mm -hmm. the DVD repair kit. <laughs> and you put it in mm -hmm. and it'll clean itself. Clean it up. And Those little whiskers. Little whiskers oh, on the disc, that, clean like, that lens, and and like, but the thing was, you know, you get you get your copy, and then you start watching, and then you start skipping, and you'd be like, oh no, and you call them up, no other copies, <laughs> da, do they give it to you for free? Ah, oh, but like, <laughs> so nostalgic, mm. so so nice. So I'm glad you had the courage to to man this outpost, this 
this this it was my this, duty mate this last bastion <laughs> the last this, bastion the last the last bastion of physical dvd hire <laughs> well it's my honor it's my duty it's my privilege oh nice you've got a few other beautiful weeklies I do. here weekly first <laughs> the first one i'm seeing on that pile it is a film that i think is sublime transcendent it's a movie that means so much to me it is Spirited Away. Oh, my God. From Miyazaki. Adventure. Where were you when you first saw this movie? Did you see it as a kiddo? So, dude, I saw it when I was like 16. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've just realized I seem like the... I seem, An eye-opening age I, as well. Yeah, just I seem... to come across something like this. Man, I, I seem like the biggest flog. The first two films I've gone for are... Uh, <laughs> Non English. <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing a whole other side. Dude, here. I love cinema. <laughs> no, but um, I guess so. I've always loved fantasy books. Mm. So, like, the genre that I would always pick up, it was never like crime, it was mm. never biography, it was always fantasy, right? Mm. And I think Spirits of the Way, it's that portal fantasy. Oh, and when man. you're like a young person, it's the idea of portal fantasy where, you know, you start in the real world. There's a portal. There's something that takes you to a fantastical place, a world of surrealism. Oh my god! And when you're a kid, it's those movies or those books like this one for sure, Wizard of Oz, Harry Potter, those kind of portal fantasies where you go, maybe there's something more out there. Maybe there's something in this world that I don't understand. Was that what like draws you to those things, dude? That it's feeling? funny. It's funny you say that. So one of my favorite fantasy books is called Magician, mm-hmm. and that is and that starts yes in a different in a slightly different world mm-hmm. but it still starts in a world where there's like it's it's humans mm. it's knights it's it's that and then and then they've got the mage yeah and then all of a sudden there's like dragons and and ghouls and all this kind of stuff which is I'm, i'd never made that link it is mm. portal fantasy and yeah. i guess what i what i loved about spirited away was again just the sheer audacity to tell a story in that manner mm. and have it look the way it did or every every convention of how you think something should look mm-hmm. is gone. Um, I, I, I have no idea where the inspiration for so many of these creatures comes um, because, yeah, sure, there's like, there's, there's dragons mm-hmm. and that kind of thing, but then there's like, you know, the spider dude down the bottom yeah. who's like, who's like rattling away all the stuff to send back up the top. Like, what kind of dude is that? It's like so, it's that idea of surrealism where you're like, oh, it's an unbridled, unchained imagination. I know. Someone whose imagination is so free, they can concoct things that are so dreamy, so dreamlike. Exactly right. And then it's beautiful. Mm. It is just a beautiful, beautiful story. You empathize with everything everyone involved mm. everyone like, like you're rooting for just about everyone mm. like i think with a lot of studio ghibli stuff mm-hmm. it's like you you aren't even sure if you leave necessarily with this huge like moral uh, epiphany mm. it's just a beautifully told story that's kind of told in a different in a different way. Like the resolution's always a bit different to what Western yeah. films are like. Man, I'm actually really, the way you say that's like quite moving, like that it's not an epiphany. And I think you're hitting on like what it is, like the spirituality of these films, especially when you think about them, they're films for young people or young people is someone that he's trying to speak to with these films. And it's not like an epiphany. It's almost like there's a melancholy to them that you're kind of left with. And I think those are why those films resonate so much, especially when you're young. You're like, wow, there's, there is this like portal to another world, but it reflects like what we are here and like what your life is there. And I think it is the best example of that. I would say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be vulnerable for a moment. I think this is one of the very best movies ever made. Oh! Yeah, I really do. I, when I saw you pick this one, I got so excited. Oh man, it's, I mean... And like just what you said there as well, like the melancholy, she leaves the world. Mm. She leaves the world. She leaves her brand new, she she leaves her brand new friend. Mm. 
like behind forever. And it's the tough lessons that you have to learn in life as well. So it's I like, know. it it's captures like, the beauty of those feelings. And like, you know, it's not drummed like, you know, I never had the epiphany that, oh, you know, life has seasons, but mm. that's all moments or like, mm. you know, but that's exactly what it is. And just to, to, to do it so beautifully and have it still speak to me, a 34 year old now, mm. I watched it on, like like only the other day after yeah. I gave you the after yeah. I gave you the record. I was like, far out. These films aren't bad, Tone. Well done. <laughs> and, like, and like I watched it, I was like, far out. It's incredible, and you can't not have some moisture come out of your eyes when you mm. watch them. Unfortunately, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not me, mate. Not oh. me, the guts, mate. <laughs> Before we move on to your next pick, it would be remiss of us to not talk about it because I think our deep bond and friendship is based around this. Food. Oh, and in spirited away, like people always talk about like anime food and food in particular in Ghibli movies as being so unctuous and like beyond perfection. I think that's what it is, like because it's animated, you can make it look how like what you the ideal version is like when you think about like that philosophical term of like idealism like what is the perfect version of it the only way you can achieve that is by freaking drawing it from your heart i know man and like every time you see it mm. and like food prep <laughs> food prep in ghibli mm. films my god it's just like i mean if people out who, if people who are watching haven't done this do yourself a favor and just type into whatever social media you have <laughs> and type in anime food prep mm -hmm. and just watch them like like oh, like, yeah. like like chopping up spring onions and you know cracking eggs and making omelets mm -hmm. and fried rice it's just oh it is perfection and you're right there is well i guess so much of the lesson to be learned in in spirited away is about not gorging yourself mm -hmm. and not Oh God! Well, the lesson, well, I let's mean, say, it was who missed hasn't us. It, yeah. it's us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, we we certainly have rolled out of a few restaurants, but yeah, I mean, the f yeah, the food in Ghibli mm. and Spirited Away particularly insane. On the complete other side of the spectrum, oh. we've gone from surrealism. Your next pick is one of the great masterpieces of grounded. Oh yeah, realistic crime cinema. It is Michael Mann's epic. Heat. Crime. Bro, how good. How good is this film? <laughs> that could be the whole conversation. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Because I think what is exciting about Heat, it is that when I use the term epic, I really mean it. It's so many things. What is that element that captures you most about this film? I mean... Pacino and De Niro head to head. Mm -hmm. Like a cop who you think is a worse guy than a villain. Mm -hmm. Just how they're so intrinsically. They're can... two sides of the same coin, oh, buddy. I know. Two it is, sides. It's out of control. I'm con... on this side. Oh, and I'm on this side. <laughs> this side. Yeah. And I mean, that scene where they sit opposite each other. Yeah. I remember being convinced as a kid when I first saw this movie. God, maybe they're not even in the same scene. Maybe they filmed these separately because I couldn't quite... I was such a little nerd. I, these were my heroes. No shit, dudes. When I was a teenager in my little Velcro Mambo wallet, oh, I had a man, printed out back. picture of Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. That's so cool. That I used to just keep in my wallet. You are a I was sweetheart. Like, well, it was before I had a, a smartphone. I couldn't, just, I couldn't just Google what they looked like. I just needed to go... I need every now and then I need to see just a need to be of reminded. Guys. Just need to be reminded. It was just a little printout one side, they were on each side. So, you know, that was like my little cop and criminal on the same side, the different sides of the coin. And I was so obsessed. I was just like, man, I don't even know if they could have handled them together. Maybe they couldn't even do it. But, you know, they dude, did. Dude, I was a maniac, a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, but I'm into that. What, <laughs> I was a truther. What were you, 15? Like, yeah, I was 15. But, dude, but, dude, but, like, I mean, no happy ending. Mm. I love that. Yes. I get so annoyed with happy endings when you can just tell that they've been like like plastered on at the end for I can only assume middle America. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and just like the, you know, the slow zooms, like, like oh, the yeah. shots that are taken. And that kind of like that Val, blue color palette. The I hue think. that comes mm. through. Val Kilmer killing it in his role. Forget, like, like you kind of forget he's in it even. Yeah. Like he, he turns in a bloody masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think it's like that for me, like what, where heat really ascends is it's that epic scope where it's so many different stories being told. You've got the two leads opposing each other, but then there's all these other aspects of the life of crime and how this film kind of explored the, explores those. And what really hit me the last time I watched this is there is this one small plot line that kind of runs throughout. And when it finally connects with the film, it's a bit of a heartbreaker, which is Dennis Haysbert, the wonderful actor. He plays... Uh, a guy who's trying to go straight and he's working as a cook in a crappy little diner and you can just see these little glimpses of his life just not working people not respecting him and when the moment comes to get back into crime as the way out of the straight life he goes for it and there's something about that that's so heartbreaking and so much like a story of like that's American crime that oh man and I guess the the other part of the American crime, not the other part, one of the other parts, mm. when you hear the VO of De Niro mm-hmm. and he's like, you've got to be willing to drop everything and be out the door in 30 seconds, mm-hmm. have no connections to behind. And it's like, it's his little love story. It's him mm-hmm. It's him wanting connection that ends up costing him. Yeah. You know? And I think that he wouldn't change that decision is like what is powerful about that performance and that character. Oh. And yeah, because like, it's just, it's so, it's so epic and it's wild how it like starts, you know, they're all sing, like they're all alone, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And then at the end, like basically what Pacino's character sees is her in the car. Mm. And him, and then, and then he's like, "Well, he's around, you know." It's ah, oh, it's just so good, man. They're doing Heat Two. Yes, the book is out. I, I've seen that. I've not been. I've been too trepidatious to read it because now they're talking about it going to actually be a movie. I don't want to read the book. That's it. I'm saving myself for the film. Who do you want to fill those shoes? Me and you, maybe, or <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've got the chops. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we've got the street cred. Um, I know that he's talking about Adam Driver being Neil McCauley, and they just come a hot off Ferrari. I can, I can see Driver playing that. Mm. And who's up? Who I do you know? I'm trying to think who can do a Pacino now, or who could kind of embody that. Hard the, energy of the him. hard energy, but also mm. a bit of neuroticism. Yeah. Okay. He's an. It's not quite an LLF field pick, but what about Gyllenhaal, Hall, Jake? Yep. Yep. If any, originally I would go maybe. <laughs> but do we want him older? Do we want him a bit older? Oh yeah. Well, hey, we can freaking get some of that Irishman stuff. Let's get the old guys back. No, 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 no. But young. like, but like, I mean, at the same age that they mm. were when they shot it. Yeah, because it's only it's set a few years before and a few years after, so it's kind of like an interesting which one, which way. So yeah, I mean, God, that's a question without notice. Um, <laughs> My apologies, I didn't mean to get you a gotcha. No, this is a huge gotcha. <laughs> um, far out. Imagine if like Bill Hader. Oh man, doing both. <laughs> <laughs> doing both. That's no, what but I no, but like, see. well, because like you often hear people say that people who are grounded in 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 comedy Mm -hmm. are incredible straight guys yeah incredible straight guys and we've seen how dark bill Hader goes in barry like i so i can see him going and we've seen him do a a pacino impression as well man can i pitch you my uh remake idea go because i think the only way to improve heat is for them to fuck. <laughs> I think that's the only way for them after the diner scene to go, yeah, you want to come back to my place? That's how you do it. But here is what I'm thinking. And they can go either way. The, either way you want to cast it, who's the cop, who's the criminal? Denzel and Angela Bassett. Oh, huge. Denzel, Halle Berry. Oh, that's cool. 
we got a hot movie. It's not just called Heat, no, it's, it's called, called Hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somewhere between the surrealist masterpiece that is Spirited Away yes. and the gritty, grounded, heist film that is Heat lies a movie directly in the dead center of them, and it's your final pick. It is Christopher Nolan's dreamy heist film, Inception. Man, I mean, did you make that correlation when you put these together? No, like, like so when I when I sent you my list, it was kind of it was kind of funny. It was, how quickly you made the how quickly you connected the dots. I was like, whoa, I'd never considered that. Well, it's my one purpose in this world. I think you've got a few more, but sure, <laughs> my brain is wide and exactly that way. Um, but I, but yeah, I guess upon reflection like all of my films are like adventure mm. they're all a, they're all adventure they're all kind of everyone some of the like a lot of the characters are somewhere where they shouldn't be and a lot of these characters are technically doing the wrong thing mm -hmm. in in according in accordance with the with the world that they're in mm -hmm. so i don't know what that says about what i like about me and what i like however I mean, Inception. I remember the first time I watched it. I just. Do you see it in the cinemas? I saw it in the cinemas. I was just, blo I was just blown away. Mm. Like, it was probably the biggest, most expansive film I Because I, I saw Batman Begins mm -hmm. in the cinema. Yeah. Which is huge. Huge. But Inception was bigger. Because it's something else. You're it's, just like going, oh, it's an original vision that I'm seeing. And then, and then, you know, not only is it, I guess, literally bigger in terms of scope, mm. but then mentally it's huge, right? So, so I love, I love the mental gymnastics that you go through as a character. I thought the performances were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, thought they were all incredible. Were you going on to like message boards, like reading what the theories and stuff were? Dude, I am, um, <laughs> I'm like pretty pretty average with tech with like tech mm -hmm. and like getting involved in that kind of thing so like i've never been involved in message boards or reddit threads or anything like that so i guess that's a long polite way of saying no <laughs> um you fucking nerd <laughs> i didn't do it i didn't say it. <laughs> i've heard about it um but um <laughs> But I mean, I mean, if you call like a message board, like sitting with my mates and go, what do you reckon you have in the mood? Yeah, um, okay. Someone had mates in real life. Oh! I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, um, I've got to say like the premise mm. is crazy, right? Yeah. How cool is that? And then to just like slowly bring in this, this tension mm. of, his own of, of his own mind mm -hmm. getting to him the and darkness of it and letting her in and letting his own guilt and then is, is he lost mm. is he lost to it all you know i love that and again not a hollywood ending mm. tell you what i really like about this movie and it, it kind of comes after a movement in the early 2000s, late 90s, I call it the Millennium Mindfuck era of cinema, where there's all these movies at the turn of the millennium that fuck with your head. Like Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko's number one, The Matrix, Truman Show, those films, and a lot of them deal with like that same kind of surrealism. Existentialism, all Existential, that kind of stuff. Existential, like, yeah. who are we? Why do we exist? Who are the fuck are you, man? Like, all of those kind of movies. Where's your head at? is the song that would play for these movies. Yeah, you know. I'm so into that. Yeah, so it's like that kind of feeling. And so almost like this modern or Americanized surrealism, which is this idea of taking something complex and then distilling that down to an image and then turning it into cinema. And I think this does it really well. It's not just dreams, but it's like psyche as well. And like how you like those feelings of repression, like how your mind works and how your brain interprets those things through emotion, how they feel, how they look. And I think because Nolan is such like, he's a logical guy. Like he's such a guy that is all about like grounding in reality. Like his take on Batman was like, it's real. 
And then with this, it's like he takes those images and goes, okay, how do I make it real? How do I actually explore these in a physical way? And I think there's something about like that pragmatic sense of this movie that is kind of like the secret weapon of this film and why it sticks with you. Well, I think that's a really good point because you could so easily have flying cars mm-hmm. and like spaceships and all that kind of stuff because we're in dreams. But the dreams the dreams are giving are given defense mm-hmm. and 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 he uses and he uses great dialogue mm-hmm. and he introduces it so well like the rules are laid Exa- out so and, nicely and what a great scene mm. um with the young architect i've yeah. forgotten the name of uh we've got elliot page elliot page yeah so elliot page plays this architect and we've got leo as the master architect mm-hmm. And how do they set up the rules? How do they tell us so, so obviously? Oh, let me show you. And then just a very, very blatant. Mm-hmm. This is blatant. It's some of the best exposition you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Just- and it's like, it's what interesting because with these kind of movies, often it's like that science fiction exposition where I go, well, let me dumb it down for you, bucko. But instead, no, this is a freaking heist movie. It's laid out like a heist movie. You're getting that You're heist You're stealing something fiction. from in someone's mind. That's uh-huh. what it is. That's it. And you go like, okay, we're going to get the team together. Here's the team. Here's how we do it. And like every heist movie, it doesn't always go exactly to plan, but you know what the plan is. So you see the failures happen. You understand how it unravels. You can't do that. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Here's He's, he's your dead wife. Oh no, shivers. What are we going to do? Like <laughs> It's a normal movie. They say shivers. They don't huh? say the swear words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but one thing, the you know, speaking of those theories, the, the reading of this film that I've always loved is that this is Christopher Nolan's film about filmmaking. And I've always found that so attractive because the team is... You've got Ken Watanabe's character. He's the studio. He's the one funding it all. Leonardo DiCaprio is the director. He directs everything. You've got Elliot Page as the architect. That's a set designer. You've got Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's the one that kind of puts the team together. He's the producer. And then you've got wonderful, like the kind of first big exposure we all had to Tom Hardy. And wasn't he great? And he's so good because he kind of embodies that actor. And he comes, yeah, he comes in and he goes, well, what are you going to need right there? Yeah, yeah. He is, you're so right. I had a a mental note to talk about how good Tom Hardy was Mm -hmm. in this before I came in. And then I'm glad you just dragged my memory. His performance as... What do they call him? Um, he's kind of... I always thought of him as he's the actor. But they call the they call him like the forger or something like that because he forges the signatures. He forges the accents. He does... And such cool crime movie terminology as well. It's 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 fantastic. And, um, and also, you know, I mean, the performances are at another level. Like all of, all of their performances... He's referred to as the fence. The fence. Mm, which is like that kind of crime thing. That, it, yeah. Like forgery and the way that, you know, where you send stuff off. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I love this film for all the reasons we've just said. Um, I think oh, it's not underrated, mm. but I think it could get more flowers. I, I, I'll I tell you this. It's a movie that I like more every time I revisit it. I remember when it kind of, when it came out, I was a little bit cold on it. But I went back to it a couple of years ago and I just was like, loved it. Oh, yeah. I loved it. And I feel like that's often the way with me with Christopher Nolan films. Like sometimes. Oh, I wish that a- was the way with Tenant. Oh my <laughs> God. I just never got there with Tenant. <laughs> me neither. I'm still trying. Because these films are just a little bit cold. They're a little bit emotionless for me. So it's kind of like, ah, uh, but when they are, like Dunkirk, I think gets all the way there for me. And then, of course, Oppenheimer. I really loved it. Dude, what about Dunkirk when you realize that they're all in the same timeline? Mm-hmm. Like, and like when, when you clock onto the fact they're in the same space, you're like, they're oh. all in the same space, they're all in the same timeline. Mm-hmm. Just one of them you see for three minutes on screen, the other you see for 28 minutes mm-hmm. on screen, and the other one you see for the. Just blow, blew my mind. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a master filmmaker. Stuff pick. 
it's time for me to offer you my staff pick. Well, finally. I've finally, chucked all of these in the algorithm. Finally, a <laughs> sense of authority in the room. <laughs> Absolutely. We're finally here. And I think like, you know, that observation that we made of these these films being like spirited away is this surrealist masterpiece. It's very dreamy. And then you've got Inception being the dreamy heist film and all the other way on the spectrum. You've got Heat being a grounded heist film. And I was looking at those, I go, okay, why don't we just recalibrate that spectrum a little bit? And I've got you a wonderful film. And I'm going to tell you this, this is firstly a recommendation for all of this filmmaker's films, because I think you will love them. Not only is a huge influence on Christopher Nolan, especially with Inception, the hat that you're currently wearing on your head, oh. Requiem for a Dream. And I always pronounce that like it's a rhyme for some reason <laughs> by Darren Aronofsky. This is, I, I think he might be Darren Aronofsky's favorite filmmaker. Oh. Um, it's a man called Satoshi Kon. And even in Re Requiem, I'm going to say it the real way this time, Requiem for a Dream, uh, he even used imagery from oh, no one of his films. I think he even paid him to be able to use like, uh, use like a couple of stills or to something. Not even use the stills, but almost use his work as a storyboard for certain scenes uh, in Requiem for a Dream. But this is a film that he made after that. This is a movie called Paprika. Sci-fi. By Satoshi oh. Kon. And so we are basically recalibrating it to go a little bit more into the sublime, a little bit more into the surrealness of Spirited Away. This is an anime film uh, that I is am so excited, quite dude. literally the primary influence for Inception. Uh, it came out just a few years before. It was a major influence. I'm going to read you a little bit of the plot. It is about a scientist who, under a code name Paprika, is a dream detective at night. Atsuko <laughs> and her colleagues are working on a device called the DC Mini, which is intended to help psychiatric patients, but in the wrong hands, it could destroy people's minds. What that device is... It is a device that like links up to your head where you can kind of share dreams with people oh. and you can enter other people's dreams. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. Ding, ding, ding. We're hitting something <laughs> here. And when a prototype is stolen, Paprika springs into action to recover it before damage is done. And this is kind of doing those things you were talking about, like how Nolan's grounded, how he kind of finds these dreams and like are in a reality of representation. But here, this is once again, that pure imagination. You literally begin in a circus with this film and it gets wild and more warped since that starting point. And it's just a truly mesmerizing visual experience. For me, it's one of the best representations of dreams and dream logic, how things don't quite make sense, but they do when you're in there watching them, yeah, yeah, when you're yeah, experiencing yeah, yeah. When them. When you're in there having, like enjoying or not enjoying the dream, mm. you're like, this is so real. And then you come out and you're like, oh no, that was a horse that had gull or like gills and like it was underwater with a gun. Mm. That's it. But that made sense. Dude, uh, have you seen this movie? Because that's <laughs> kind of what happens in this. Yeah, I watched it last night when I, when I shut the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> But Satoshi Kon, he's like a surrealist master in my opinion. Yeah. And he was, I think he was a prophet. Like he could see things that were yet to be discovered. His first movie, Perfect Blue, which is a big inspiration for Darren Aronofsky, especially when it comes to this uh, Requiem for a Dream and also Black Swan is kind of inspired by another one of his movies as well together. They, he, he kind of saw things that were happening in the future. Like Perfect Blue is from 1997 and it is about parasocial relationships and the darkness Whoa. of them through the internet. And so it's like, how did this guy know? Like parasocial wasn't even really a term used in 1997. And now it's like... That's the first time I've heard it used in, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of like, man, this guy, he was it. And I think you would like all of his movies, but Paprika is a great place for you to start. Well, Alexi, thank you. I cannot wait to watch it. And this is a special copy. This is an actual X rental from the video store I worked at as a teenager. It's even got the. Um, I'm not sure if he's if if Alexi's put this in. If no, he's, if that's he's, my handwriting from when I was 16 years old. We can't ever be sure if <laughs> this is part of uh, arts. If this is part of the arts department, <laughs> but. 
Thank you. Thank you mm. very much. I cannot wait to dive into it. Well, we're going to get out of here and we're going to go watch freaking Spawn. Let's go watch Spawn, baby. <laughs> Alexi, thank you. My pleasure, my brother. The last video store. <laughs> well, what a wonderful show with Tony Armstrong, my dear buddy, and sick picks, brother. I'll admit it. Sick freaking picks. What a great combo. And let me tell you, we can find those movies. Parasite can rent on VOD if you haven't seen it, but it's a sensation you probably have. Spirited Away, the surrealist classic, is on Netflix. And Heat, the classic heist film, is on Disney+, Plus, which just seems crazy to me that it's on Disney+. Plus. And of course, Inception is on... I'm going to refresh my memory right now. Inception is on... Binge, baby. You can binge Inception. And then finally, Paprika, my perfect recommendation for Tony, is on Netflix as well. And I'll tell you this, Tony watched the movie and he sent me like 10,000 messages about how much he loved it. Maybe I'll share those on the Instagram, which you can find at last video store, but Tuta. And I'll be sharing those screenshots of all his praise for that wonderful flick on there. Plus a few little bonuses here and there. You can watch this show on YouTube. You can listen to it as a podcast. And let me tell you this, you too are a member of The Last Video Store. So I want to treat you just like I do all the other members of The Last Video Store. I want to give you a bespoke staff pick recommendation. And the best way to get me your new release, your two weeklies, is as a comment on a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, a comment on our YouTube page for one of the episodes. And if you want, Last Video Store Batuta on Instagram, DM us a voice message, and I will give you your bespoke staff pick recommendation based on your new release and your two weeklies. So send them in, babes, across all of those platforms, and I'll get to you. I'll get to you. It might take time, but baby, I will get to you. It is my freaking mission on earth to do this. So, of course, you're welcome into the last video store anytime. Until the next time we meet, I'm just going to say this one thing. I love films.